Hi, my name is Vanessa van Dijk and in this video I'm going to show you the ordinary skincare routine for hyperpigmentation which refers to red, brown, grey or even black dark spots or patches which look much darker than your natural skin tone and based on that you're trying to find a solution to lighten them or reduce them over time so that it becomes more even with your natural skin tone so that they become less visible. And so with the example routines that I have prepared for you I can hopefully help you to achieve this goal. Now, so some of you are already familiar with my PowerPoint, so you just probably want to keep the focus towards the example routines to see what I have included so it can help you to improve your skin concerns. Whereas if you're being completely new to this setup, I just want to briefly go over the entire PowerPoint so that you can see the setup, understand the setup, otherwise it can, it can be quite overwhelming based on all the slides that you now are about to see. So first of all, right here we are in the PowerPoint. I came up with example routines which is the first part that you can see in the PowerPoint and I try to keep the slides as informative as possible so even in the little drawers you can learn something new about each slide and how you can properly use the products when using them and creating a routine with them. Then below I have for you some skincare tips. Now I'm going to include most of them when I'm going over the example routines but again you can see you can find everything below. Next one would be what to remember when when layering your skincare products, which primarily focuses on the order of application and skincare peeling compared to skin peeling, which I will share with you later in, in much more detail, but you can find everything below. And then some sunscreen information. This is primarily an overall guide when it's the best time to wear sunscreen, reading the labels, if you need to wear sunscreen in and doors and have an overall application and removal guide. And then lastly, you have the skincare product descriptions, which basically list all the products that I have included in my example routines with a little description next to it so that, that you understand for whom it is suitable and what they can do for you so that you understand the entire routine and not just blindly following it. And so it is important that you understand the entire PowerPoint because I have prepared for you again the entire PowerPoint uh, in the description box down below which you can download to your device if you want to follow the routine and have those skincare tips and tricks for you as well. But now let's get started with the example morning skincare routine which you can see right here. So this is a routine that you can follow daily in the morning. It is suitable for all skin types and it helps to hydrate the skin, fades hyperpigmentation, boosts collagens and protects skin against pollution and UV rays. So most treatments that I have included have more than one function, but they can help to reduce hyperpigmentation as well. So we are starting off with the first step, which is washing your face. Now in the morning, using a cleanser is an optional step. So if you usually like to just wash your face with water, well then go ahead keep on going with that habit if it works well for you then just keep on going however if you're referring to a cleanser I recommend using a regular cleanser that's suitable for your skin type that's why here you can see two examples that I can recommend below the boxes you can see the general guide and you have right here the general guide on how you can use your cleanser so that you do not only see those examples visually but you can and, and I actually put this into practice when trying this routine at home so this would really include not only the order of application, not only see the specific treatments, but how you can use the individual products as well. So go ahead, wash your face with your cleanser, rinse it off, pat the skin dry, which basically refers to taking always a clean cloth or a clean towel, let's put it this way, then gently pat all over, please do not rub and remove the remaining water drops from the skin surface to primarily avoid a skincare peeling, which happens when using too much of your skincare products, when not waiting long enough, or if you're going to apply your skincare products on still wet skin, because then you're basically rubbing off your skincare product that you just have applied or previously applied, which then can be quite annoying. So therefore, the, the little step in between by patting the skin dry is the most essential ones. Then we are going to head into the first uh, treatment right here, which is applying your water-based gel mixed with the vitamin C powder. Now you can say the ordinary has several like uh, brightening zones. It's not only vitamin C, it's niacinamide, alpha butin. But in this specific combination, I went with the ordinary marine hyaluronics or the ordinary hyaluronic acid, which are both hydrating zones, mixed with the ordinary l acid powder. I find that this combination is the most not really convenient one because you have to mix it daily freshly in the palm of your hand 
but based on the texture and since vitamin C can be quite unstable, you're always going to mix it fresh and then get all the benefits when applying it freshly to the skin and it absorbs quite nicely into the skin, doesn't feel heavy or greasy. So therefore I went with this specific recommendation. Again, you have the general guide right here below. So if you would use it with the Ordinary Marine Hyaluronics, you would go with about five to 10 drops. If you are choosing the Ordinary Hyaluronic Acid, then go with about two to three drops because they have a difference in texture. And then mixing it with about a quarter spoon that the Ordinary provides with a vitamin C powder and then mix it in the palm of your hand. Now I have the setup right here next to me so I can just quickly show you visually how this guide would look like. So you have the Ordinary Vitamin C powder right here and it comes with a little spoon. Now I have already some powder in it so I can share with you the guide. So I'm referring to a quarter spoon of this little spoon. Please do not take a teaspoon because then you're going to to end up with too much vitamin C uh, powder which then can lead to stinging or burning therefore I recommend starting off with just a little bit so that you can see how your skin is going to tolerate it because you are the mixing like a guide that's doing it so the more powder you are going to use the more like stinging or burning can occur therefore start off with a little bit and then see how it goes over time so that's the amount that I have right here and I'm going to mix it with the ordinary marine hyaluronics so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open marine hyaluronics and I'm going to dispense the vitamin C powder on the palm of my hand and then I'm going to add between 5 to 10 drops. Now start off with 5 drops, see how far you then can blend the mixture. If that isn't enough, then you can move up to 10 drops. The Marine Hyaluronics has a very watery texture where you can go with 10 drops without any concern. And then you're going to add it to your vitamin C powder. So this would be now five drops. And this would be about 10 drops so that you can see the guide. Mix it on the palm of your hand. And then once you can see that the powder has dissolved, you're going to rub it between your hands and then gently blend it all over your face and neck. Being careful around the eyes, please do not use it on top of your eyelids. Please do not get it too close to the lower lash line. To some extent, it may work on the eye contour. However, I recommend being careful, especially if you're being new to it and you aren't sure how your skin is going to tolerate that specific mixture. Because again, the more you're going to use of your vitamin C powder, the more sensitivity can occur and therefore the more sensitivity on sensitive areas such as the eye contour it's going to create like stinging and burning therefore be careful but overall this is a great mixing guide that I can share with you that you can try out and then over time adjust it if you should feel the need but this is a great way on how you can always mix your vitamin C powder freshly on the palm of your hand to get most out of your vitamin C and you do not need to worry about any like oxidization after like a, a few months so that you still can keep the benefits so therefore this would be my little guide. I do hope that it was somewhat helpful. If you want to see a more specific guide, I do have it for you in the top right corner. So then apply the mixture to the skin and then you're going to leave it on the skin. There's no need to wash it off. Usually this mixture should absorb quite fast into the skin. So therefore, once it has absorbed into the skin, you can immediately move on to the next step. But as a general guide, you can wait between 30 seconds to a minute uh, in between so that you have something in mind when it comes to a time frame, and then move on to the next step, which is the most important step throughout the day, which is applying your sunscreen. Now you can see two examples right here. By now, you should already know that I'm not the biggest fan of the ordinary sunscreen due to the white cast. Still, if you don't mind it, it's a great sunscreen. None than less. It's just a white cast that bothers me. Therefore, I went with either Neot Survivor 30, which is a mineral sunscreen that has a little tint in it, or Cosrx Always Soothing Sun Cream, which is a mixture of mineral and chemical, and that one basically goes transparent. So once you have applied it to the skin, you, like, you won't see it anymore. It does not leave a white cast. So those are two great examples that I can recommend. So overall, you do not only want to protect your vitamin C that you just have applied, but you want to protect your overall skin because 
because of the hyperpigmentation that you're currently experiencing, based on the treatments that you're currently are trying to use to reduce your hyperpigmentation, you want to make sure that the skin has time to heal, to do this um, with the treatments and to some extent on its own as well. Therefore, please don't forget your sunscreen throughout the day. Now again, you have the entire general guide below the boxes. And so then this would include the entire morning skincare routine, which is a very simple three-step routine. Then when it comes to the first evening skincare routine, we are working with exfoliating acids. Now this is a routine that you can just follow on its own or you're going to alternate it between the other evening routines that I have prepared for you. This primarily depends on what you want to look into in depth or you want to try like the first evening routine at first before adding another product to your routine. That's completely fine. I just want to share with you the options and what the routine would look like. So first of all, the first evening skincare routine right here we are working with AHA exfoliating acids which is more suitable for dry skin and this helps remove the dead skin cells on the skin surface reduces fine lines and wrinkles and sun damaged skin which refers to the uneven skin tone and increases hydration within the skin which does uh, exfoliating acids like AHAs do as well as repairs the skin barrier when following with such a moisturizer afterwards so overall this routine is more suitable if you should have dry skin and hyperpigmentation i do have another one for you if you have oily skin but let's break it down so I did mention right here that you should follow it Monday, Wednesday and Friday. This primarily is a frequency that I can recommend when first of all being new to those exfoliating acids and second of all if you want to balance it out with the other evening skincare routine that I have prepared for you. But overall you have the general guide and frequency of the exfoliating acids below so that if you just want to work with the exfoliating acids and with none of the other parts of the evening skincare routines well then you can follow this specific guide and increase the frequency over time if you should feel the need. So nonetheless again we are starting off with the first step which is washing your face using a cleansing balm or regular cleanser. Now in the evening compared to morning in the evening washing your face with a cleanser is important to properly remove your sunscreen and or makeup and the excess oil dirt and sweat from the skin. So if you went for example with Cosrx Aloe Soothing Sun Cream that one is the one that's easily removable from the skin and so therefore you can go ahead and just use your regular cleanser on its own which I've picked right here if you have a drier skin type then those would be two great examples. Otherwise, you can go ahead and use a cleansing balm or oil cleanser such as Ordinary Squalane Cleanser. That one can be used on its own to properly break it all down so that you will end up with a freshly washed and clean face. But if you want to see a more in-depth guide about how you can properly remove your sunscreen, you will be able to find it under sunscreen information below and there you can see the removal of the sunscreen. So again, this can be with your oil or balm cleanser or regular cleanser on its own or you may want to do a double cleanse and here I'm going to break it all down which you can read in your own time. Still if you want to see how you can properly remove your sunscreen I have a video for you in the top right corner. So that you have the overall uh, like knowledge and uh, see the guide visually as well. Once you're done with your cleansing step, again, you're going to pat the skin dry to remove the remaining water drops on the skin surface. And then we're heading into the water-based serums, which focuses on the AHA exfoliating acids, which then would be the ordinary mandelic acid, lactic acid, or the ordinary glycolic acid. Now I went with those three examples because this is what the ordinary offers. And so if you're being completely new to the exfoliating acids, you aren't sure which one you should pick, Overall, mandelic acid is the gentlest. Then next to it would be lactic acid and the strongest, so to say, because it absorbs the fastest into the skin, would be then glycolic acid. So if it comes to a scale where you would experience more stinging or burning depending on your skin tolerance or maybe sensitivity degree, glycolic acid would be the one that would um, like refer to stinging and burning the most often whereas the other ones are a bit gentler there it's less likely to happen but if you're already familiar with ex exfoliating acids or you have quite resistant skin well then of course you can go immediately on with glycolic acid nonetheless you have the general guide below on how you can adjust it based on following with the little stars that you can see then the amount because they have a slightly different texture then you're going to apply it to the skin you're going to leave it on the skin there's no need to wash it off again being careful please do not use it on top 
above your eyelids, not too close to the lower lash line, and then there you go. Give it a moment so they can absorb into the skin, and then you're going to follow on with your moisturizer. I recommend using a moisturizer with natural moisturizing factors to repair the skin barrier and to increase hydration within the skin. So, of course, you could go ahead and use the ordinary natural moisturizing factors or, for example, Neot's hydration vaccine. Both are two great examples that I can share with you. They help to really strengthen the skin barrier. And by the way, if you always wonder, well, what do the specific products do for my skin? What do they include? Well, this is again where you can find it under the uh, product descriptions. So for example, natural moisturizing factors, here you have a little guide to understand what it contains as well as what it does uh, for the skin and why this is basically a moisturizer that I always like to recommend. So this moisturizer is made up of natural moisturizing factors, which is something that we have naturally in the skin. But as we age or depending on how damaged the skin may be, this can decrease. So what you want to do is you want to increase those uh, ingredients or let's say those elements so that you have a proper functioning skin barrier again, which is then made up to multiple amino acids, fatty acids, urea, ceramides, uh, glycerin, you have sodium, a PCA, you have hyaluronic acid and many other components that are naturally present in the skin which basically help to draw water um, from the air into the skin, keeping it hydrated and helps to create a proper barrier so that it basically can protect itself from the harmful environment um, like that you can go through every day. And so therefore it is still important to work with such a moisturizer afterwards if that's your main focus that you're trying to improve. And so there you have again the example of the evening skincare routine when working with AHAs that are suitable for drier skin types. Now, if you should have an oilier skin type, this is now where we are heading into a similar evening skincare routine. The only thing that's going to change is basically the cleanser, because if you're working with a regular cleanser, you want to make sure that you're using one that's suitable for your oilier skin type. And we are going to exchange the exfoliant from AHAs into a BHA, which is the ordinary salicylic acid solution, which helps to balance oiliness, removes that skin cells on the skin surface, unclogs pores, and with the moisturizer helps to hydrate and repair the skin barrier. So overall, it has a similar function, but salicylic acid can penetrate deeper into the skin. And since you have already oily skin, you probably want to balance this as well while improving or let's say reducing your hyperpigmentation. So again, the frequency right here stays the same below, same if you are looking into like the top when balancing it out with another evening skincare routine or just keeping the focus on the exfoliant itself. Now when it comes to the other evening skin routine, which you could use on days when not using your exfoliant, then it would be working with ordinary granactive retinoids or retinols. So again, you can see that one is great for all skin types and you can use it basically on all the other days when not using your exfoliant. Or if you do not want to use an exfoliant, but you just primarily want to keep your focus towards a granactive retinoid or retinol, well then there you have the overall frequency again below, similar to the exfoliant. So you can go with the first PM routine um, on its own or only the second PM routine on its own, or you can alternate between them in the evening, depending on what you're looking for. Because again, Retinol or active retinoid can help to reduce finance and wrinkles, sunspots and other signs of sun damaged skin, which again refers to an uneven skin tone and it can help to smoothen skin texture. So to some extent it has a similar benefits to an exfoliating acid, but they work in a different way. Now the exfoliating acids have to shed off the dead skin cells on the skin surface, whereas your granactive retinoid or retinol helps to speed up the cell turnover so that the new skin cells become much healthier, they are going to get pushed forward, whereas the older skin cells let go of the skin surface. So it's a different way on how it's functioning, but based on that they still to some extent help to exfoliate the skin can work in a similar way based on the benefits. Nonetheless, again, it's the same three-step setup. We're working with the cleanser to properly wash your face. Then you're heading into your treatment, which can be either the ordinary granactive retinoid at 2% or later on 5% in emulsion or squalane, 
all the ordinary retinols and then I have some examples right here with a 0.2 or 0.5. Later on over time if you should feel the need of course you could move up to the 1%. But since we, I kept it in a way that everyone can use it that you're not going to end up with too much irritation or the best way would be no irritation at all. I want to start off with the lowest percentage possible and so then this would be the example. Then you're going to apply it to the skin and then leave it on the skin there's no need to wash it off. Right here again wait a bit for it to absorb into the skin and then move on to your moisturizer that contains natural moisturizing factors. Now with the one in emulsion or squalane and depending on your skin type you could use them on their own as well because they can feel already quite hydrating on their own but if you still want to work on your skin barrier or you have a drier skin type you can follow with a moisturizer afterwards and again you have the general guide below. Now the last evening skincare routine would be an evening skincare routine when not using exfoliating acids or your retinol or retinoids and then it just would be keeping the focus towards properly washing your face and then following with a moisturizer afterwards and then there you go because in between um, when if you're being new to uh, certain in, like treatments you may not want to use them daily immediately because again this can increase the risk of experiencing signs of sensitivity like stinging or burning therefore you want to give your skin always a break in between before using it again and over time if you should tolerate it daily then still sometimes giving your skin a break of the specific treatment uh, like isn't wrong and then you can just keep the routine very simple and then there you go when it comes to the last evening skincare routine now as you can see with the little headlines it specifically describes when you should use it as well as what it can do for you when looking into the different evening skincare routines so that you're not going to overuse it or that you're not going to use them together. Now again I want to quickly emphasize that this would be the like upper part of the powerpoint when it comes to the example routines. But again, below you will find the general skincare tips. I did not mention the patch test. Uh, I do want to quickly emphasize that if you're being new to certain treatments, specifically with a higher percentage, you probably want to do a patch test before using it all over your face and neck. So here you have a specific guide. If you want to know how you can do a patch test, I have it for you in the top right corner. Then I went primarily over the first slide specifically with how you can properly wash your face, damp skin versus wet skin, as well as the waiting time in between. However, I did not include um, that depending on your skin concerns, if they are too severe, they are too deep, um, you probably over the counter products do not do much with certain skin concerns. Therefore, it's best to always see a dermatologist to get the specific treatment or even therapy depending on your needs. And overall, when following a skincare routine, you always have to be consistent, use the products regularly, and it takes time to see results. So when trying to fade hyperpigmentation, this won't happen overnight. You really have to give it a few months to see some improvements. And in case you should have melasma, I mean, you could give it a try with the example routines that I have shared with you. It may work. However, in most cases, it's probably best to see a dermatologist to get a stronger treatment for those like needs. And then below, I went over the order of application based on the products that I have recommended so that you can see the setup of the example routine. However, if you say, well, I want to include additional ordinary products or I want to change the routine a slightly bit, well, here you have the general order of application when working with the ordinary products based on their formulation. So they say, well, start off with water-based serums, then move on to anhydrous solutions, then oils, then creams, and then the suspension, and lastly, the sunscreen throughout the day. Now, this is just an overall general guide. What you have to consider is the conflict. And so with certain products, you cannot use them in the same routine based on what the ordinary recommends. Therefore, I have for you a specific beginner guide friendly video of the ordinary products and where you can find that information. I highly recommend checking it out in the top right corner. Then below that, I went already over skincare peeling and how you can avoid it. So I do have, like, I went over it in some detail, but again, you can read it in your own time. Then understanding the difference between a skincare peeling and a skin peeling, I do have a specific slide for you as well with a little image. What's the difference? Because with skincare peeling, 
you are basically rubbing off the skincare product that you just have applied or previously applied where skin peeling can be caused if you for example had a sunburn dry skin working with retinol retinoids exfoliating acids or benzoyl peroxide or it can be caused by other skin conditions uh, which can refer to some extent a dry skin as well as irritated skin which you can see right here so i just want to put this in a summary so that you understand primarily the difference because based on that you would like treat it in a different way and then again over the sunscreen information i went through it already how important it is but you can find the entire guide below so that you understand what the spf stands for how you can properly read your labels when working with your sunscreen and how you can properly apply it plus i already emphasized earlier the application and removal guide and so this is basically it. Below you have your skincare product descriptions and that's all what I have included in the entire PowerPoint. So that you hopefully have an entire general guide in mind when working with those skincare products and with a future skincare product so that you will have the best experience possible. Now, this is what I wanted to share with you. I do hope that you enjoyed this video. If you want to support my work and my channel as I'm an independent YouTuber, you can go ahead and do so by clicking on the super thanks button or check out the description box. There you will find a PayPal link. I would highly appreciate it. Other than that, if you want to do it the free way or you want to support my channel in another way, well, you can go ahead and give it a massive thumbs up as well as share this video with your friends and family members so that they can learn more about skincare. Now, if you want to know, learn more about skincare in general, see the different applications. I'm going to leave some of the videos at the end of this video so that you can keep on watching. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon in the next one. Happy skin caring. Bye.